Obviously, you as a former uh, uh, White House ethics lawyer, you've you've been around the block. You've seen some interesting situations in the, in your time as well. Um, just as a, as a small, quick assessment about what is happening here, have you ever experienced anything near the situation that we have now? Uh, no, not in the United States. I have not seen anyone other than perhaps the American Communist Party uh, collaborate with the Russians in order to win an election inside the United States. Very clear. Um, Donald Trump Jr., he basically said that uh, all he was doing is trying to see and investigate whether he could receive some opposition uh, research here. Do you believe that that is the only thing that he was doing here? Well, I don't know what he uh, uh, intended other than to collaborate with the Russians to receive uh, derogatory information about Secretary Clinton. Uh, opposition research is one thing, taking advantage of information obtained by foreign agents, uh, most likely through spying in the United States, is something entirely different. When he received these emails, the only appropriate thing for him to do was to call the FBI. The, the T word has, has been mentioned already, treason. Um, what is your assessment here? Well, treason uh, is generally understood to be uh, the betrayal of one's own country, uh, particularly into the hands of a foreign adversary. Uh, in the United States, uh, treason is dealt with in uh, different ways depending on whether we are at a state of declared war. If we had a declared war, as we did during World War II, uh, the treason provisions of the Constitution would apply and the statutes that would allow someone to be prosecuted for treason for uh, just giving comfort to the enemy. Uh, or anything of the sort. Uh, but outside the context of declared war, we use other statutes to deal with treason. Uh, spies are prosecuted under the espionage statute, computer hackers under computer hacking statutes. Uh, we have uh, provisions of the campaign laws that prohibit foreign nationals from making contributions of money or services to uh, political campaigns. Uh, and those will clearly be applicable here. We have false statement statutes. So if someone uh, uh, lies about their communications with the Russians or any other foreign uh, country when they're asked. They could be prosecuted for that. Uh, Alger Hiss uh, uh, spent four years in prison in the 1950s uh, for having forgotten about a meeting he had with Whitaker Chambers, uh, an American who was at the time working for the Russians. And he had so-called forgotten about that and sworn testimony, and so he was sent to prison. So we have a wide range of statutes to deal with what is essentially treasonous conduct, uh, but we only generally use the treason statute and constitutional provision in times of declared war, such as World War II, but very rarely during the Cold War, because that was not a declared war, and, and I don't think that would be used today. Okay. So what is it, in what kind of realm are we looking then? right now, if it's not treason, what would it be? For? Well, uh, once again, uh, this is something that uh, could amount to uh, conduct that would generally be understood as treason, but would not be prosecuted under the treason statute. That is my point. Yeah. When we have a, uh, an undeclared war, as we did during the Cold War, we use other statutes. And in, in this situation, uh, Robert Mueller's investigation will continue, uh, and he will discern whether uh, those statutes were violated. Uh, in connection with this meeting or any other meetings with the Russians. Uh, you mentioned the, 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 the sort of the campaign financing statute as well. That's an interesting one. It's been mentioned here and there. How would that work? Because there was no transaction in that sense. Uh, there was no monetary transaction, but if the Russians at uh, considerable expense had uh, gathered information about Hillary Clinton, had done negative uh, uh, research on her, so-called opposition research, on behalf of the Trump campaign, even if they had done it legally, uh, that would have been a violation of the campaign finance laws for them to provide those services to the Trump campaign. You have the additional problem, of course, that the Russians engaged in computer hacking, espionage, and other illegal activities inside the United States. Would it make any difference to investigators or prosecutors uh, the fact that he never did receive anything? It might make a difference. We have yet to find out the facts, but attempting to receive uh, stolen information, or uh, just like attempting to receive stolen goods, uh, is, uh, uh, is prosecutable in some contexts. And furthermore, we all know the end result. The Russians did disseminate uh, what they at least believed to be negative information about Hillary Clinton. Uh, they disseminated a substantial number of private emails that have been obtained through computer hacking 
through WikiLeaks. We don't know exactly how that was done and what the role was of anyone in the Trump campaign, but that's what the investigation needs to uncover. Um, Donald Trump Jr. stated that uh, besides this, he has had no other meetings with Russians, at least not in a political setting, so to speak. Um, is that a realistic uh, thing to assess? Because obviously he, he lied once already. I don't know uh, whether he's had additional meetings with the Russians, but I do know that he has a great deal of difficulty telling the truth about these meetings. So I'm going to uh, 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 take with a grain of salt quite a bit of what he has to say going forward. Donald Trump Jr. Uh, has said that he's happy to, uh, to cooperate with investigators. Um, what is the, the main question that you would ask him right now on the oath? Well, I would want to find out about every contact he had with the Russians or anyone working for the Russians uh, or uh, who uh, uh, communicated with him about the Russians or information the Russians had on Hillary Clinton. Uh, and uh, I would want to know about anyone else in the Trump campaign who had such uh, uh, contacts with the Russians. He also stated that he did not tell his father about this meeting until very, very recently. Is that a realistic thing? To I don't know whether he told his father or not. Uh, once again, he has some difficulty telling the truth about these matters. Uh, his father has had some difficulty telling the truth in some other contexts. I think the investigation needs to uncover what really happened. You've been in the White House. You've been close to situations that, you know, you've been close to these kinds of situations, I would say. Um, what is the, the state of mind now in the White House, you think? Well, um, I've never been close to anything like this because anyone uh, in the Bush administration who have been caught collaborating with the Russians uh, in uh, the context of political activity in the United States or any other context where they uh, weren't telling the truth about it, uh, would have been fired and uh, turned over to the FBI. Uh, this is a very tragic situation uh, for the United States, and uh, I think that working in the White House right now is going to be a very difficult situation. Uh, the, the, the statement that Donald Trump Jr. made was crafted in collaboration with the White House. What does that tell you? Well, there's some uh, lack of clarity about what uh, his uh, father's role was in approving that statement. I cannot believe that his father didn't have access to those emails or wasn't told about the emails before he approved the statement. Uh, but the bottom line is that we've had differing stories from Donald Trump Jr., uh, inconsistent stories, inconsistent stories from the White House about what is a very, very disturbing situation. During the, the Watergate investigation, there was this very famous one question about what, what the president knew and when he knew it. What was, what was that question again? Yeah, what, uh, I think uh, it was Senator Baker uh, who asked, what did the president know and when did the president know it? And that's uh, a very relevant question here. Uh, the main difference is uh, that uh, the Watergate uh, scandal was purely domestic. It was a third-rate burglary. Uh, it did not involve the KGB, uh, the Russians, any other foreign nationals. Uh, here we have a situation where a foreign country, uh, an adversary of the United States, has been spying on the United States for a long time, uh, was engaged in spying on the Democratic National Committee, on Hillary Clinton, on other Americans through access to their computers. Uh, so it's a much more serious situation from a national security perspective than the Watergate problem ever was.